This is JPEG to Raw, show number thirty-nine on May eighth, and I did catch I did catch uh, um, what you Kathleen right there at the end. She didn't know I caught her, but I caught you dancing. I was, yeah, I caught I that didn't too. Know you could record. <laughs> I, did, I thought Busted. it was just us. <laughs> And she does that every time during the pre-show, but nobody gets to see it. So that time, I, I caught you. It, so this is JPEG to Raw, show number 39 on May 8th. And I'm joined by Kathleen and Tim. Yay! Um, How's it going, Mike, Kathleen? Kathleen is in a new house tonight. I'm so excited to be here and out of my in-law's house. <laughs> Finally, after eight months. Eight, eight months, months living that with my is, in-laws. That is tough. Mm -hmm. Should be so, sainthood. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have a lot of new people out there tonight, and we have a new listeners from Stitcher too. I don't uh, I don't know how many people are familiar with Stitcher Radio, but Stitcher Radio is a place where you can get podcasts. It's audio only. We have a lot of new listeners from Stitcher, so we welcome you guys. And you know, if you're at Stitcher and, and you you're thinking, wow, this would be so much better if there's only video in this you know photography podcast. Well, there is. There is, you know, we do have two video feeds, and you can get them either on our site, on iTunes, or a number of other places. There's a video large and a video small. Um, if you're like me, though, you may like the audio version because you can listen to it in your car or whatever. So whatever, whatever is there, you know, we have all three feeds, and we do do a weekly show, um, usually Tuesday nights, and we have great guests like the guests we have tonight. Yay! Um, these guests are... Somebody we I've been wanting to get for a long time, and I had hesitated because you know they're very popular. And now, you know the thing I found as I work with different guests is some are easier to talk to than others. Some take a long time to to get in touch with you. Email them, they don't hear back. It's just, because they're so busy. You know, not, nothing against that. Your email may even get lost in what you send to them. But Rachel and Crystal, I mean, I think they responded within a couple of hours of the first email I sent them. That's awesome. Wow, that is, that is great. And so the first thing I thought is these ladies probably are excellent with what they do because there's so good customer service. And that is, in my opinion, in this day when you have such bad customer service everywhere else, that, that is huge. Yeah, that's and big with, time. With the following they have to be able to respond with that kind of speed, that is just incredible. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the more I looked at what they do, the more impressed I, I got with, you know, not just the actions that they do, which are incredible in themselves, but their photography that they do. Very cool. Yeah. So I'd like to welcome Rachel and Crystal. How are you guys? Hi. How are you doing? We're good. We're good. <laughs> Wait, did you guys practice that yeah. intro? Because you both waved and said hi right at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Mike, it, it, they, can they see us out in chat? Because I'm they, not sure they can see us. Yeah, they can. Okay, I'm saying they can't the blank see us? screen. Oh, I can see it. I okay, good. It. it must just be me. It probably is that Mac you're on. Uh, yes. Right. Yes, the Mac. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, but now you, you want to maybe lose my train of thought, of course, Kathleen. Talking about Macs will do that. <laughs> and they can see us in chat also. Yeah. yeah. And it, it should have the other feed if anybody needs it. But um, Rachel and Crystal, you guys... Are, are amazing with what you do and you know at first I I didn't realize I didn't see all the other photography y'all do oh and I should mention this is your first hangout too right yes, yes. first Google hangout, first Google hangout. I mean y'all yeah, have done Skype and that kind of stuff but this is the first Google yeah. hangout Skype yeah. is our normal yeah <laughs> we're not even that good at that yeah so probably not. <laughs> a couple of times so we left it yeah, it, we had issues with it, but um, so far, knock on wood, uh, Hangouts have, have worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. But what I was saying is, you, you know, I was looking through all your actions. You have a lot of actions, and, and they're amazing. But, you know, you also are incredible photographers. Uh, you probably, oh. probably didn't see the, the stream I was playing before, and we'll go over some of those photos a little bit later. But I was streaming a lot of y'all's photos through the stream on the pre-show, and I just love watching them as they went by. So, oh, if, if y'all don't mind, would you give us, <laughs> would you give us like a little intro into, you know, maybe how you got into photography and what it is y'all, what do y'all do? And... Sure. Okay. So, like we started, well, you know, we started obviously, you know, our individual journeys. Um, I started. Are uh, you guys friends or are you related? We are just friends. We're just friends. Okay. okay. Um. Let's see. So I started, uh, I got my first SLR in um, May of 2008. 
um, I I just had my fifth baby at the time, um, and I I did you say fifth? Fifth. I actually have six now. Wow. Oh my word! And you run a business? Yes, we we are just we don't sleep a lot. No. <laughs> yeah, really. I can't imagine. I cannot imagine. How old are your kids now? What's the range? Um, let's see. So my youngest is uh, 15 months, and my oldest is uh, he'll be 13 in just a couple weeks. So. Wow. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. So, Good for you. So yeah, it's so much fun. We have a great time. Um, but I just, my oldest two boys have autism and we would go, you know, we tried like all the like go to JC Penney's, you know what I mean? Try all those things, trying to get family portraits. And I mean, we did, we have story after story of like, he ran in, they had like hand sanitizer and he rubbed it in his hair. I mean, it was just <laughs> like constant. Like, it just never worked out. And I was like, I got really stressed by the time I had my fifth baby of our lack of family pictures and stuff. So, um, you know, in the person I, I just had to take matters in my own hands and, mm -hmm. uh, started working on that. Um, and then, uh, you know, I met Crystal, like, so Crystal can tell, I guess her thing and then we'll tell how we came together. <laughs> so. so I, I got a camera when I got married. Um, and Okay, so I, I tell people that I wanted to become a photographer to take pictures of my kids, but in all reality, my husband's ex-wife is a photographer, and so <laughs> I want... <laughs> I'm totally just being, like, upfront and honest. Like, the honestly. truth comes out. Okay, keep yeah, going. So, I guess you're going to be brutally honest. I, you know, it is what it is. So, um, you know, there's that friendly competition between the ex-wife and the new wife. <laughs> so Anything I you can do, I can do better. <laughs> I didn't say that. So, <laughs> no, so, and then I, you know, I, I got, I started in photography and I shot my first wedding, like, I, I mean, probably like four months into it. It was stupid. And then I got sued. <gasps> and after ooh. your first wedding? My very first Dang. wedding, I got sued. And it was my fault. I was I was not prepared. I was not, I did not have insurance. I was shooting in P mode. I was with a kit lens. I was not. She like learned all the I hard learned lessons. All the hard lessons <laughs> oh at the my gosh. Like you hear p photographers say all the time, this could happen. I've never yeah. met someone who has said, no, it happened. It happened. It happened. Yeah. And so I'm a big, like, you know, at least if anything, get insurance and protect yourself because. They paid me $500 to shoot their wedding, and I paid them about 4000 when all was said and done. So, um, Oh, my word. And now it's minimal to what it could have been. Um, so I stopped for a year and started to, like, actually learn how to shoot in manual and stuff like that. And then um, July of 2009, I think it was May of 2009, May of 2009, I decided to shoot a wedding again. And the, I did it for free. <laughs> So, <laughs> You're like, no one is suing me here. I know. And exactly. we had a contract and everything was, was good to go. And then they changed the reception date to like three days earlier than their ceremony date. And what, the problem with that was that I had a trip to Disney World planned with my family and I wasn't going to be back in time. And so they had explained to me that it was fine, that they understood that we had had a contract signed with the, the dates already set in stone. So they weren't worried about the reception. But I still felt bad you know, like not having a photographer there for the reception. So I contacted Rachel. Um, and at this point we had never actually met in person. Like we just talked online. Mm -hmm. And then I said, well, come to their the internet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said, come to, come to their session, their day before session. So you can meet them. So it's not awkward when you shoot their reception. And so she came and we've never stopped shooting together. We had like a it's... really good time. We yeah. found that, uh, we had complementary styles, but yet we like things that I knew or she knew we kind of brought different things to the table and it really yeah. felt like, I mean, we'd, we'd learned a lot up to that point. And then once we started working together, I think having that kind of, you know, uh, bringing different things and kind of having that synergy. It's almost like you were stronger together because you bounced ideas off of each other. and Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and there would be times, you know, when I'd be like, Oh no, like I, you know, I can't even tell you how many times, like, during the last couple of weddings, she'll be like, oh, no. And you get stressed, you know, when it's your camera, you know, that isn't working or something. You'll be like, oh, here, Rachel was, oh, okay, it's on, it's on manual, you know, yeah. focus. Like, yeah. And it's easy when it's not your own camera to say, oh, you know, I'm looking at this objectively. And so it's great. Like, you know, you have those little moments. You work together. Mm -hmm. um, you troubleshoot. And then, you know, you get home and you say, okay, we tried this, this, and this. And I really love how X, Y, and Z worked out. Um, but A, B, and C, 
you know, like I think if we tweaked it this way and this way next time, we're gonna have a better result. Result, and it, it was it was really really great. I think um, I think a lot of people, you know, it's hard for people to make that jump into working as a partnership because you know obviously there's a monetary uh, you know somewhat I guess disincentive because you know say well I have to split the money. Um, but for us, we just really feel like it has been honestly we have half the work. I mean, yeah. in all honesty, like I have, there's not as much stress on me, exactly. You know, to produce as much work because Rachel's producing her half. You yeah. know, yeah. And there's less stress. So, so I love it. the idea. There's been actually two girlfriends of mine who we've all talked, always talked about. Oh, let's join forces, but they live in different cities so it just that makes it hard yeah it just wouldn't yeah. even work but so you guys really have a good thing going that's awesome that is, awesome. That is so that's been it's been two almost three years yeah july will be very cool two years yeah uh, so it's good so if you don't mind me asking why why did they sue oh because i got home and i had no images on my uh memory card I had gotten corrupt. Gone it was corrupt. corrupt. We tried to recover oh. them. He tried to recover them. There was nothing. And so even with you shooting in P mode, it wasn't that the images were bad. It's just that there were no mm -hmm. images. So really, your problem could happen to a well-seasoned wedding photographer who has been in the years Absolutely. in the business yeah, for years. Oh, so it wasn't anything. I mean, Absolutely. I, I there's things that I could have done differently. I could have shot on different cards because I shot the entire wedding on that one card, um, you know, which I should not have done. Now... I am very, I mean, I'll retentive about what I do, and I will only shoot on a four gig card. Yeah. Um, and I shoot raw, so I will only shoot probably about 95 to 100 pictures at a time on one card. We so talked I, about that last week about splitting it amongst multiple cards to prevent that exact issue. Yeah. If I lose anything, I would rather lose 95 images than an entire wedding. So, uh, and, you know, and then we work together, so there's a redundancy in that. Yeah. And now um, that was a huge reason that we sprung for the Mark III. Um, yeah. is you can back up to that second card in camera now. So, so do you yeah. both shoot with the Mark III now? No. So I have a Mark III. Crystal will be ordering the Mark III once they're back uh, available. They kind of have yes. become scarce. So. Okay. Yeah, I think the, the Mark III and the Nikon D800 are hard to find these days. They are hard but, to you find. know, that, that was, I was going to mention that, that I think, one, anybody who's listened to the show knows that I will never shoot a wedding. <laughs> and because, because I'm afraid of things like that. But if I were to shoot a wedding, I would definitely want a camera that could take, you know, two cards, whether they're both compact flash or whether they're compact flash. Like I think in the eight, 800 is compact flash and secure digital. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Mark III is as well. And, and, I, and I'm sure that the Canon is the same way as the Nikon where you can have it where it actually writes the both cards at the same time. Exactly. So yeah. you could do that or you could have it where it falls over. It fills one up and it falls over to the other one. But yeah. for me... If I'm shooting something important, I probably would, you know, have it right to both at the same time, just to be sure. Exactly. And then if yeah. I had to take them out, I'd put them in different pockets. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so, I don't even, well, actually, what I ended up doing was I just got, like, a 32 gig um, backup card. So, oh, that's good. You know, so I have this one big backup card that's not coming out, and then I have multiple small cards mm -hmm. that, you know, will be getting changed out. So one way or another, there it's... There you know, it's going to be safe. So, so have you ever had a problem with a card failing, though, since then? No. No. And, it, like, and I know that, like, now I shoot with SanDisk cards because they have a recovery software. Um, you know, so there's, there's, there's other things that you can do just in case, for some reason, a card goes corrupt yeah. or whatever. Well, I hate it for you that your very first experience was a bad one. Mine wasn't great either. I did a family photo shoot, which was not anything near a wedding. And... The family complained because the woman said that she looked wrinkly in the pictures. <laughs> we had one. We had one. Uh, they brought their kids, and they had macaroni and cheese all over their face. And then they didn't even bother to clean it off. They didn't bother to clean it off. And it was so much that we couldn't, I mean, we couldn't Photoshop it out. I mean, it was so much. It looked fake. And she was like, well, why can't, why is there macaroni and cheese on my kid's face? And I'm like. Because there was macaroni and cheese <laughs> on your kid's car. face. I mean, like, we were at this, like, this place. I mean, there's no water. You know, we're just like, oh. Yeah, so. <laughs> but you know what, though? Like, even though it was the very first wedding I ever shot, I, I count my blessings that it was my first wedding that I ever shot um, because it, I learned my lesson really fast and really early. Um, um, and it's seriously I, quite I, expensive, though. It was. It was an expensive mistake. I mean, because I shot that wedding so I could buy a crib for my daughter, you know, because I was oh. pregnant. And so, you know, <laughs> that was a very expensive crib. 
<laughs> You're breaking my heart here. <laughs> Plus, I got to imagine your husband's thinking, huh? No, he's the one that told me to take a step back. Oh, okay. You know, because he's like, well, that was a very expensive crib that we just bought. I think, you know, these cards are pretty, they don't fail that often, but they do fail. Oh, Eventually, they yeah. fail. And what I tell people is to always um, format it in the camera. You know, when, yeah, when you take it, when you're taking stuff off the card, don't move it off the card. Copy it off the card. Yeah. Um, right, so you, you know you have the card it reader. Exactly. And if you use Lightroom, I would say use the Lightroom feature where you can have it written to two different places at the same time, as it's coming off the card. Uh, of course, if it corrupts in the camera, you know, you at the mercy of whether it can be recovered with software. I mean, there's not much you can do then. Sandisk has really good recovery software from yeah. what I've heard, um, and it's free so, as long as, from, from what I understand, don't quote me on that, please. Like, so, <laughs> so yeah, um, it comes with the card like, generated or the website. It's free. I think yeah. it's free as well. Yeah. Now, so you guys, are, really good part, so. you guys are in one of the more stressful uh, parts of photography, you know, shooting weddings. Um, do you, how, does there ever friction between you? I mean, how do y'all work together? I never fight. Like seriously, they have a better track record with each other than our husbands. <laughs> we, do. Like, we just don't ever fight. Like honestly, I mean, I think the thing is, is we, um, you know, we, I mean, just early on, we just were very, uh, we were very upfront. We just said, okay, like, you know, we just split everything half and half, you know, we buy our own gear. Um, so there's just no question. It's not like, oh my gosh, why are you spending this from the business fund? Why? So, uh, so very simply, like you know, so I have Rachel Rehart Photography LLC. She has Crystal May, Crystal May Photography as an S corp, um, and then we have a joint venture, which is Pure Photography and Design, Pure Actions for Photographers. Um, that just holds IP. Everything else is split between the two companies. So it's super simple. I mean, I think a lot of times, you know, people are like, whoa. That seems kind of, you know, but it, it's honestly super simple. It's easy. Um, and so, you know, because I mean, I think money, you know, is a big cause of fights and marriages. And mm -hmm. I bet it would be if it was in business too. But we kind of just have kept it, you know, uh, that's just kind of not been an issue. And then, um, you know. So when there's a business know. expense, do you pay for that like off the top and then you guys split what's left? No, like we usually, so let's see, so gear and tangible items like that, um, that we can use, like I buy my own camera, she buys her own camera, I buy my own lenses, that type of thing. Um, and then the big business expense, like revamping the website, then we just split it. Okay. Um, you split the cost of it. Yeah, you split that. And then like, and then like products, cause like we shoot weddings and all of our, um, collections have albums and stuff like that. Um, it depends on. Sometimes if we have a lot of weddings back to back, I'll purchase one. She'll purchase the next wedding. It's yeah. just, you know, it, 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 that's just how we do that. If we don't have one for a while, then I PayPal her money or she PayPal's me money. Yeah, okay. um, and then with, uh, like when we shoot, like every other wedding, I shoot the formals and she shoots the formals and we yeah. edit our own pictures. And that right there is why you should have a partner. <laughs> partner. Yes. <laughs> like, your shots, your turn. I have that. <laughs> Fun. That's yeah. really smart. Yes. And by the formals, you mean, all right, we need one with grandma. Okay, one without yeah, grandma. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. His family, her family. Yeah. You know. The ones that are n not creative at all, but you have to have them. Yeah, exactly. You're like, you, you, you. You're like, okay, 15 minutes. Yeah. That was a record. You know? <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> that's, that's our, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, but honestly, yeah, I mean, I think, and I think the thing is, like I said, like, Crystal is super creative, um, she's really good at coming up with, like, you know what, we should totally do this, um, and she just, you know, she'll get to a location, and she's like, oh, and she sees all the possibilities, you know, and I'm like, okay, but we need to just turn just this much more, because the light <laughs> will be, like, loop light if we just get it right She's very here. technical. So I'm the details, you know, I'm like, okay, okay that's awesome. That so it works really good. Like I think that we have um, we have different personalities, so it, it we don't butt heads. And then yeah. your skill sets kind of match together. That's that's great. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and, and the majority of the time since we've started, I mean, we kind of learned how to shoot on manual by ourselves. But then once we came together, it was at the very beginning of our career, so we weren't like we didn't have like a set way of how we did things. So as we our business grew, we were together, and so it just kind of grew. Like it was really organic. Yeah. Now you you said you shot that first that first wedding in P mode. Um, what do you, I mean, what do you shoot now? Uh, manual. Yeah. 
Yeah, all manual. They said. Ninety-nine percent of the time we shoot in manual and raw. And raw. Um, sometimes I'll shoot in AV mode, but. Um, so I I did get a question from a listener today, for uh, yesterday actually, and they they asked, I just got my first DSLR, and what should I, you know, want to come out of P mode? What is the first thing I should do? So I told them what I thought, and I think it was a little too much for them. So I'm wondering. <laughs> You know, Overload. <laughs> I, I tried to keep it simple, but I guess that didn't work. I, I, you know, sometimes I don't keep it simple enough. So for somebody getting their first DSLR who wants to come out of P mode, what would you suggest be their first thing um, that they go into? Um, you know, for me, um, I was kind of craving that like bokeh look, you know. So I'd done all my googling and everything, um, and you know, so I, I put it into AV and, you know, like just open my aperture way up. I was like, oh, this is so cool. Um, you know, and then started working on focus after that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but quickly I realized, oh my gosh, they always look so gray and lifeless and dull. So it was kind of an interesting thing though, to sort of get that, um, that start and say, okay, you know, I'm, I'm getting an idea of what the aperture is doing. But honestly, for me, what I would tell somebody who really wants to get into their um, SLR, I would say, you know what, buy a gray card, you know, start using that gray card, set your exposure on the gray card, and, you know, because, I mean, once you're in that one single lighting position, I mean, it's almost easier than setting in an AV, you know, because you set it, it's completely balanced, you make sure you're just at zero, you're on that gray card, and then you're free to walk around that lighting set, you know, scenario any way that you want, and it's so interesting to look at, because then you're looking at your meter, and you're saying, okay, well, this is the correct exposure, but it's not always zero, which is what makes mm -hmm. AV bland and dull and lifeless, mm -hmm. and that's right. what makes all the other ones bland and dull and lifeless, is it's making every single thing that zero, and you look right. at it, you say, oh my gosh, look, you know, my son, he's, he's you know, plus one, and maybe a you know, a third and, oh, but look, this over here, you know, is negative, you know, one and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And I think it starts opening your mind into how your camera's really working and what it's thinking about and what it's right. thinking about. And it's such a simple thing because, you know, if you don't want to sit there and think about it, you just put it on zero, you know, you set it for that great card, you put it on zero and you go and you're fine, you know, but when you really start thinking about it, then it starts opening your mind to, okay, well now, Maybe I don't need that gray card with me all the time. Maybe I don't need to, you know. Because you start to learn with your own mm -hmm. eye what right looks like. Exactly. Well, here, so here's what I was thinking. Um, and I, I, come, I do more sports, and in the, in the, I used to. My kids are kind of growing older now. And so I was usually in A mode, and not auto, but aperture priority mode in an icon. Okay. Because the light they was make ever. make it easy for you in icons and just say A. You know, what, does what it is, really say A? Hold on, Scott Green's out there, and he'll correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, you will. What? Yeah, mine says A on my Sony. Stop what, what? it right now. Yeah, it just says A. People, they make it all confusing. You know, it says, it says TV A and whatever. I'm like, seriously. Yeah, a? P A S M. <laughs> what more do you need? <laughs> a for A for Nike uh, for aperture. S for um, shutter. shutter. You're kidding. M, M for manual. Isn't that S? Isn't that crazy? That, I mean, for manual, wow. and I don't. To be, Genius, honest, right? to be honest, I've never had it in auto mode, so I guess that's, uh, how do you get it in that mode? P, it's P. Well, as I, as Actually, I have a P, I have an yeah. auto, and I have a green auto, which is a really stupid uh, point and shoot on my camera, <laughs> which is when you hand it to somebody to say, take a picture for me. Yeah, you throw it in the green box. So my first, but my first thought was to tell them, maybe, you know, since Kath, I used to always shoot in A mode. Uh, aperture mode and Kathleen and Tim have convinced me to do more in manual I did some in manual you know like when I was shooting basketball or indoor sports the lighting was consistent something like that but I've been doing more in manual and I, I'm almost convinced that that is easier oh, yes. because you oh, can yeah. see you can see it sounds harder manual sounds harder but actually you can see your exposure with that little line and you can and I use spot metering and you can you know, set that how you want. But some maybe this with for this guy, his first thing he needs to learn is exposure. You know, and how aperture, shutter, and ISO all affect the the exposure, and that sometimes is hard to, to learn. That well, and, like manual is. I mean, it's complicated to learn. Like in the very first time that I did it, I, I remember I was in the park and my screen was white after I took a picture, and I didn't understand like why. Like I can't see my kids. Like yeah. you know, that would have been a cute picture, but then. You know, as I learned, you know, AV mode, 
it's got just as much complication to it as manual does because you have to know exposure compensation with AP mode. You have to know when to up it. You have right. to know when to turn it down. You have to know, you know, like all that stuff. With, so you're putting just as much work into AV mode as you are manual mode. Um, so, and, and, and the, the downside to AV mode is that it is not consistent. Right. Um, and so, because it may read a, a dark spot, you know, and overexpose your picture when, you know, you didn't want that. And so, it, it's kind of hit and miss. And so, I you know, I, I switched over to uh, manual about a year and a half ago from uh, probably A mode and uh, probably short times. The only time I go back is when I'm taking uh, soccer shots. It's For me, it's too difficult to go, to go into manual. But I think you're right. When I was in the A mode, more likely was was I using exposure compensation versus now. And what I found when I'm using the the manual mode, it forces me to pay more attention to what's exactly. inside the viewfinder. Yep. I'm paying more attention to the picture before I actually press down the shutter. So I think it's helping me understand more of what my camera is doing. And that's a bad habit. The only habit time that I shoot in AV mode is like we were at a wedding um, just this last weekend, and the sun was coming in and out of the clouds. I mean, like every 35 seconds. Like it was, and, and it wasn't like it. the same exposure when it came out of the clouds. It was like mm -hmm. a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. And so, like, and we just had to get going on those yeah. shots. And so, and they were um, like, and they were coming out of the temple. And so, like, you, you it, miss it, were, you miss it. You miss it, you miss it. So I would rather shoot in AV mode at that point mm -hmm. um, and have a base starting point and know that I can fix it in Photoshop later. Mm -hmm. See, I'm such a control freak <laughs> that I had two cameras she did. and one was set for shade. <laughs> <laughs> so, now that is a control that, freak. I'm that control freak. <laughs> like, what did I need? Well, you know, because because this person is so, and this may not affect be anybody out there listening right now, but for this person, he was he's so beginner that what I might recommend is he shoot in an aperture mode, and um, shoot some stationary objects, and and try you know is stop it down. You know, go with the or, or wide, make it wide open. Go with the lowest number aperture you can go with. Hopefully that's something like two eight or something like that. Take a shot of something and then go far out like f16 take a shot of it and see what that depth of field is doing what that's what that's changing get a feel for that see, and then you know, i would also make sure that whenever lens you're using because i remember when i was reading in my manual and learning how to learn how to shoot in manual that you know the, the lower number of your aperture means you're going to have more of a blurred background a better bouquet in the background but the lens I was using was the kit lens. So obviously it wasn't letting me go down any further and then I don't even I don't even remember what it was, maybe a four. And so I'm looking at the pictures, I'm like, it's not working. Why is it not working? And I didn't understand that I didn't have a lens that was compatible to really give me that super blurred out look that I really was going after. Well, and I tell people that the kit lens is probably one of the hardest lenses you can learn on totally. because it's not a fixed aperture. And so yeah. when you zoom out, you're at a three point five, and when you zoom in, you're at a five point six. And so so, and you then know, you have to start you have to too because your zoom all no, those numbers, actually, you know, and so you're at like the 3.5, which should be your, you know, shallowest depth of field. Then you have this whole problem of your distance from the subject, the width mm -hmm. of your lens. That plays into your whole depth of field the calculation. So it I say so get the 51.8, and then you can you can uh, you know like, really practice you know, and see, see the difference. Awesome. Yeah. But then what what. Uh, Mike was saying is when I was learning, I would practice on stationary objects and I would put it in AV mode and take a picture and see what the settings were. Then I'd put it in manual and I'd put it to that shutter speed, take a picture, and then I would practice like what if I raise it a little bit, what if I lower it a little bit, yeah. you know? So if you put it in AV mode, it's going to give you a starting point. And if you don't know where to start, then right. you, then that AV mode will give you that, that starting point. So, mm -hmm. and then you can see if I raise my shutter speed, what effect does that have? based mm -hmm. off of the starting image. And it's an interesting thing too, because you can look at kind of the reciprocity. Okay, if I stop down a ton, what do I need to do? Oh, I need to really, you know, change my ISO. I need to like change my shutter speed. And you start kind of understanding that little triangle effect. See, happen. my first, I think my first piece of advice for someone who's wanting to start in manual, the first thing I would tell them to do is learn the ISO. Because that, then you're learning how the light is coming in and out of the camera and that you control that. So that's the mm -hmm. first thing that's kind of like an aha moment. And then once you figure out that you can walk into the situation and set it at 400 and be good and over here you need to be at 100 and being good, then you pick one more step. I know that a lot of people mm -hmm. are comfortable just throwing in manual and jumping in full force. That was not me. I had to learn what each thing was doing. Even though I could read it 
and know that my shutter speed was going to freeze action if I wanted it to. Like, I couldn't, it just didn't click until I was actually physically doing it. Mm -hmm. But I had to, like, keep everything else static for me to learn it. Well, and I think that you make a really important point, too, because I think a lot of people, you know, they want to learn and learn and learn, and they're afraid of making a mistake. Mm -hmm. But it's that, you know, you got to get in there and just do it. Yeah. Well, I think did really help yeah. with that. I mean, I started taking pictures on film with a with an SLR back in probably uh, 1991, and no way would I have taken the amount of pictures I take now just because of how much film would have cost plus developing it, plus then trying to remember what the setting was on the picture. Now right. it is so easy. You take the pictures and you can throw it in a program and see what the settings were and what does the picture do. I mean, right. it's so much easier to learn now than it was 20 years ago. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, I mean, it's so important to get that feeling, though. You know, like you do it and you say, okay, look, I've seen the result. I remember what I'm doing. I remember I was changing this. I remember it. And I think that's really, really important because sometimes I think we get lost in that, you know, academic mindset. I do all the time. And I just see, okay, if I just read more about it, read more, and, you know, and I'll, you know, and it's like, no, just go out and do it. And you will learn a lot more. By well, and the reason I say start with the ISO is because like, I know for my cameras, the 5D Mark II, the, the most it will go is 400. And so no matter what I'm, if I'm in, you know, just auto ISO, then no matter what I'm doing with my aperture or my shutter speed, I still, if I'm in a really low light situation, I still not might be getting what I need to because my ISO hasn't been affected yet. But if I flip it out and I start moving it around myself, then I can know that, you know, in a low light situation, I can up the ISO, get the lighting that I want, maybe introduce some grain, but in this, in this scenario, who cares? So for me, that was kind of like the, the, that was the aha moment for me that, oh, I'm controlling the light that's coming into my camera. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, I think that learning each, each uh, point, I think that's, that's really critical. Like seeing, oh my gosh, the effect one has on the other and that reciprocity is, is incredibly important. Now, how did you guys make the, the, the jump to start uh, into actions? Because you still, you still, you know. Totally a mistake. Yes. <laughs> I mean, really, it really was. I mean, I, mistake is the wrong word. It was a, it was an accident, I guess. Yes. It wasn't planned. Like, we didn't go into photography to, you know, when we started shooting, we're like, oh, let's create actions. I mean, it was just, even as we created the actions, we, were we like, didn't think we were creating no. actions to really sell. So, no. Oh, we just did a webinar, like it was, well, we would get emails all the time because um, we shot a lot of newborns and people would say, oh, how are you processing these? Um, and like, we just can't say no to anybody. And so we sit there, we're like, you know, every time you type out an email and send it off and nobody would reply, you know, and we'd be like, oh. or we get a little thanks and we'd be like, okay. And that took me four hours to type out and explain to you. Thanks. Exactly. <laughs> it would happen all the time. And, and we kept doing this and kept doing this. And Crystal and I were kind of like, you know what? We should just do like a webinar and have like a bunch of people. And we could kind of explain it. And show it. Um, and show and explain and, and everything. And then as we were preparing for the webinar and we were practicing, we started like, well, I mean, we noticed that we were doing the same things over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. So we were like, well, as like a little bonus, like for coming to the webinar, we'll give you our workflow. Um, so as an this, action set, so and so when we kind of put it out there on the page, we were like, "Oh, as a added bonus, you get this this action set." And people were like, "Well, I can't afford the webinar, but can I buy the action set?" And we were like, hmm. <laughs> "So <laughs> okay, like sure, you want to buy that? That's fine with me." Um, You're like, "Wait, you don't want to know how I do it? You just want to be able to do it?" Yeah. So yeah. It was, <laughs> and then from there, that was. Uh, that was August of 2010, and in September of 2010, we started the fan page um, because people were um, writing a lot about it on our photography, on our photography fan page. page, and we didn't want our clients to get confused, and so we had, we just, we wanted to be separate, so, um, and we didn't want our clients to feel like their post got lost on our page, or that our customers' sure. post got lost on our page, so we created a fan page, and that was September of 2010, and now we're May of 2012. Yeah. How many now. fans do you guys have? Like 53,000, I think. Yeah. So 53,351. Yes. That's there awesome, you, you guys. That is, and we've not, I mean, other than like one, um, we were talking about this the other day. We were like, hmm, where have we advertised? We haven't advertised except for on one, like, um, we advertised blog on slash site. Yeah. Um, and other than that, it's all been just word of mouth. 
Yes. Absolutely. Well, I will tell you that I was telling Mike this before we started the show with you that this past week I've been working on pulling everything that I do on every single image into like a one batch action type thing. I can't figure it out because it's that whole thing like how you have your base image and then when you put this on top and this on top and this on top well this thing's affected by this thing and this thing's affected by this thing and so it screws it all up and I've spent hours I'm not kidding you hours and pretty much everything about photography you can google it and learn how to do it not this not this so you guys really have a niche I think I think it's great what you do because you're helping people make their life simpler um, and you're giving them some creativeness that they probably would have never found on their own with some of your actions. Mm -hmm. So That's it's really awesome. cool. But what you're doing is, I think it, for me, it was really hard and I've it been self-taught with everything in photography and I can't figure this out. It is a lot of work and, and so, you know, we probably spent, there's two of us and we're really lucky because there are two of us and two we recently us. just brought somebody else on to help us answer our emails because we were so bombarded and we felt like, I mean, because I have four kids and she has six. And so wow. between us, we, you know. Like, ten kids. We're very busy. <laughs> ten kids. Ten kids. <laughs> um, and so I just, you know, it was, um, we probably spend about eight or nine hours, each of us, answering emails, Facebook yeah. posts. I mean, it's a lot of, it like, a lot of here's work. how you install actions. So, you know, I mean, you think, a lot of people, sometimes you think, oh, you make these and you just put them out there. And, no. And Comes, you know, oh, like, you know, oh, I've never used Photoshop before. I've never used, oh, you know, what is masking, what's layers, you know? And, you know, so we really have tried to kind of take that in hand because we feel like if we're selling them a product to make their pictures better, we really want to do what we can to be helpful. And that's why we also really, really try on our page to be very transparent about how we shoot images as well because obviously the image that makes that a big difference. The actions. Right. Is going to make a lot of difference in the image that comes out of the action. So we want people to understand how we're lighting things and how we're um, mm -hmm. doing that because it makes a lot of difference, honestly, if you start with an image that has, you know, decent exposure um, and things, you know, I mean, because, you know, you can have wonderful hazy actions that give a nice, you know, vintage tone. Um, and, and if they don't, you know, if they're on a, like, poorly lit uh, interior image that's, you know, yellow from you know, fluoresce or from a uh, tungsten lighting, mm -hmm. that's going to look entirely different than if you have this image that shot out, you know, with natural light and it's got gorgeous backlight and hair light. I mean, you know, you can say that's totally what I want to get. And, you know, half of it's going to be in how you processed it and half of it's going to be in how you capture that in the camera. And so we try to be super, super transparent with people um, that that is just part of what photography is. You know, it's an equal balance and it's, it's an art, you know, it's an art and a science kind yes. of. So. And, and I'm I'm playing the uh, in the stream. I don't know if y'all seen that, but an action, and then one of the photos from the action. I I think I, they should be in order. Hopefully, we're not looking at the chat because that's okay. Like, that's okay. That's okay. Because I told you not to. Yeah, because <laughs> we're really good direction followers. <laughs> good job. But, but I think that's I think the point you were making just a minute ago that, that you need to start with a quality image. Yes. Yeah, that that goes whether you use an action or not. I mean, it, it, like your life is so much better if you start with a quality photo. Yes. Yeah, I mean, Photoshop is not supposed to be, it's supposed magic. to be salt and pepper, uh, as Crystal has told people many times. It's salt and pepper, and if you pour salt and pepper all over, you know, you're just Too balancing bad. salt and pepper, it's going to be disgusting. Um, right. But if you sprinkle salt and pepper on a well-prepared dish, it's going to take it pepper. just perfect. Yeah. That's you the know? best it's, explanation I've ever heard. Yes. That is good. Uh, and what, Very good. Somebody out there asked, do you, you know, some of the things... Um, I can't think of one now, but some some actions, maybe not maybe none of yours, but some of them are more trendy, like the Instagram thing. You, you see the Instagram. Oh, that's true, yeah. There's lots of people who love Instagram. Love I, Instagram. Well, I, <laughs> I, love too. I love it. Enough to pay a billion dollars for it. So well, I guess. No, I would not pay a billion dollars, but I, I love it. I'm going to be the minority. A billion dollars, we could talk. Yeah. I'm going to be the minority here. I don't like it, but look, th that look. Uh, whether you like it or not, you know, some there, there's probably actions out there to do an Instagram look. Do you think that those are going to date your image? Um, and... I, you know, I think Rachel and I have talked about this, and for our personal photography, because I have, there's a lot of clients out there that want the hazy and whatever the trend is at that time, the really color poppy or the hazy or, 
Yeah. You know, like, I mean, because you look at the images from, like, the 80s where, like, the brides and the, the wine glass, you know, or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Like, or right. whatever. It's right. It's what was in style at the time. Exactly. And so. And you look at it now, you say, what were they thinking? Exactly. And so for me, you know, I personally, like, my personal style and her personal style, that's why it works good together, um, is just classic and just timeless. Like, we don't. We really we like, like a clean edit. We do. We like um, a clean edit. Now, we will. And for our clients, most of the, I want to say like 90% of the stuff is clean edits that they receive. I mean, they do get some artistic edits, um, but their albums are full of just clean edits. So when we upload to our fan page, however, I mean, we do showcase all of our different actions. And so, you know, we showcase different styles of photography or editing or whatever. But if that's your style, I just, I honestly say rock what your style is. I mean, because that's what makes you you. You know? Yeah, and I mean, I think the but, thing is, is I think that styles, I mean, yeah, styles are going to come and go, but if you just, you know, say, I'm not going to get involved in any of these styles, um, you know, you're going to get left behind if you don't try new things, because I think that style is always evolving, but it's always building on itself and changing, right. yeah. and so if you're not, you know, kind of learning and trying to figure out what, what different elements are interesting to people you know, suddenly you're going to find yourself way behind. So, I mean, you know, so we don't always go out and, like, shoot hazy. But, but I do have images that... that I love that are hazy, like that yeah. I've taken, you know, yeah. like that I'm like, oh, I really love that. But I would not go necessarily out and shoot an entire wedding that way. But, but some of my favorite photographers, it. some of my, my best friend is an amazing hazy photographer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I love her work, but it's not my – it's it's not me. Like I wouldn't go out and shoot it, but I hired her to take my family pictures. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's you know. And I think that's the thing though is you know I think that style you know it should kind of come from within too. Like what yeah. makes you go ooh yeah that's me. Like that, I, feel, I feel comfortable with this. You, you know in the worst case you're not you, you should never be saving over the original file. So you could always Absolutely. go back to the original. Exactly. And, oh yeah, and edit time. some other way. Yeah, I do all the time. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I feel like a lot of what I've learned about editing in Photoshop has come from overdoing actions. Yes. You know yeah. what I mean? In the early days, like running it and then looking at what I was doing, and then people who I really admired what they were doing and saying, "Mine looks like I just doused it with salt and pepper." You know what I mean? And like yeah. learning how to dial it back, and then kind of trying to unpack the action to figure out like. I don't really like any of this except for that one thing. How did they do that one thing? And then trying to create that on my own. That's kind of how I, I think probably a lot of people learn how to use Photoshop. That's how I've learned. I think I mean, actions give people an end to Photoshop. You know, it gets them in there. It gets them so they feel a little bit more comfortable. And then as they grow, they want to know what those actions are doing. And they learn that they, they may not necessarily like those two layers that we've put in there, but they really like those last three. Um, so they learn to just take those off or, right. or, or however they decide to do it. And that's, I mean, Actions that's are not meant to be run and left as they are. Well, well I mean, I mean I also, really, sorry, go ahead. we've always been very, very adamant that, you know, we want our layers as open as possible. Sometimes because we do make actions for elements, um, you know, there will be times where we'll combine a couple and put a mask on it because, you know, you can't, you know, elements is, is a little bit of a different beast. We don't want somebody to have, oh, here's 900 layers, layers for you to mess with. Have fun <laughs> with that. Uh, kind of just in general, you know. So, um, but, you know, I mean, and I think the thing is, is we're very open with people. You know, mask, adjust opacities, turn things on, turn things off, you know, combine actions. Um, you know, don't be afraid because, you know, everybody's got, I mean, Crystal and I, we shoot together. All the time. We shoot together all the time. We have the same cameras. We have the same lenses. We have, you know, we use Photoshop. We edit on a Mac together. I mean, we do everything is pretty much what, what we both do. And yet, we can say, who took this picture and who took this picture? And, you know, people go, yep, that one's Rachel and that one is Crystal. Yep. And, you know, and it just goes to show, I mean, we're shooting the same subjects. We're shooting everything. And so, even when you're doing that, there's something that comes from within inside yeah. you, and you, it, it manifests itself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I am, I, you know, I'm more of a Lightroom guy, so I don't use a lot of. I do go into Photoshop to do layers and that kind of stuff, but I love Lightroom. But you know, it, when I do use Photoshop, I don't use a lot of actions. So I just haven't done it. Not not because um, I have anything against them, but you just not, haven't tried ours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my, and there you go. But my question is, <laughs> in, what what part of the editing process are you using? Is it toward the end of the process, and the in the middle, or the yeah, beginning? I mean, uh, you know, so 
uh, Chris and I, we were talking about this just actually the other day. Um, you know, when you shoot a wedding and you have, you know, thousands, thousands. of images, you know, I mean, honestly, there's some that you're just going to um, put through, you know, through Lightroom or ACR and you're going to batch them or, you know, hopefully you're going to look at it and say, hey, I kind of rocked this shoot. Go me. <laughs> uh, you know, like everything looks pretty good. You know, that's, that's the hope is that you, you know, got things pretty close. But then, you know, I mean, there's going to be things, there's going to be images, you know, you don't want to go through and hand touch thousands of 2,000 images, you know, right. because then you're going to say, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to charge you $50,000 for your wedding because <laughs> I'm your editing exactly. for the next six months. Um, Personally, but then you want things to look great. In yeah, so so the albums, like, because we get all of our clients' albums, and so we do hand touch every single image that goes into our albums. Um, we fix skin, we do, um, like, our style. So we will, like, exemplify our style into those images that go into the album. So, you know, add color, color, burn, do whatever. Color How many pictures go into an album, approximately? You know, it depends on their, their collection that they get. It ranges anywhere from, like, 45 images in our base collection all the way up to like 150 images so it really depends on and I think the average is probably 80 to 100 is our yeah. average and they can add um, images or whatever but for us because there's so many images to do and because we have another business our actions business um, we do outsource our raw edits um, for our weddings and we have another company that calls them and we'll do the basic edits for us and then they shoot us back the JPEGs and then from there we take them and um, I'm still working on releasing control of that, so I just need to be totally honest. Now, what company are probably. you guys using? What, what editing company are you using? We use Photographer's Edit, mm -hmm. and, and they're amazing. And the pricing for it is really... I they're mean, very it's, reasonable. It's reasonable. Yeah. It's almost it's kind of like, why have I not been doing this? Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and when you have a wedding and you're shooting thousands and thousands of images, um, just the calling process itself can be very can lengthy. be a very lengthy process. And here's my opinion on it too: is I like to have another set of images, another set of eyes on my images, because I am emotionally attached to my images. Yes. And so when I go through the calling process, I can't release that image. And then I you feel sit like, there for 15 minutes. You're like, this one, no. This one, no. Exactly. This so one, I have yeah. Photographers edit, I will upload all my images. They will call them, they will send the JPEGs back to me. Then I can look at it and I can say, you know what, I really think that this image needs to be included in that, that calling process um, for, you know, for my clients. But it's good to have a second set of eyes on my images that feel like, that, that, that can tell me how they saw the day going and what tells the story best. Um, and then from there, I have all my raw, so I can add images, I can take them out, I can do whatever I want with it. Um, and then the ones that go in the album, I do hand touch with our actions at our style, but they do the basic cropping, you know, rotating, white balance fixes, um, brightening. Yeah, sure. yeah. And then, but then I would say as we do, um, as we do family sessions, we, we do all those. We do all of our family yeah. sessions. We do the engagements, yeah. we do the bridals, we do the family sessions. The only thing that we do outsource will be, uh, is weddings. weddings. Because yeah. it's just, I mean, it's 10 hours of shooting. It's a lot of images to uh -huh. go through. And uh -huh. I just, I've got four kids. I've got another business. I feel like I would be slaving away at the computer. And I want to be a photographer. Uh -huh. I don't want to be, you know, like bound to the computer 24-7. Uh -huh. Just editing, you know. I love editing, you know. So, yeah. you know. You want to keep it. <laughs> that's the thing is, you know, it's fun when, we, when you have, you know, so you have the raw work done. Um, it's fun, you know, yeah. to get into Photoshop and put your seal of who you are on those images, onto those images, you know, and because I mean, the thing is, is, you know, so you send those into photographers at it and they do the same thing to everybody's images, yep. yeah. you know, and so, you know, you're like, I don't want to end there. I mean, yeah, I'm going to give you the picture of everybody like eating their cake and I'm just going to give you that. I mean, because you're not going to add, they're not, not, not going to put that on the wall. Well, no, and right. that's <laughs> hopefully not. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's the one they, they blow up. Like, they're like, oh my gosh. Uncle 30 Joe. by 40 canvas. No, but, you know, like, the other thing is, is that, like, you look at your reception shots, like, you're not going to add a haze, or you're not going to add, I mean, the, the first dance shots, absolutely, bouquet toss, you know, but just, you know, the just the photojournalistic side of receptions, you're not going to hand touch those and, you know, clean up skins and, and do all that stuff, so a basic clean edit is perfect for that, um, you know, and then, I mean, so why slave at your computer for all that time when you can, I mean, photographers edit, we can send in 50 images for $18. It's I so mean, like, worth it. I'm wow. sorry. Like, 
and you can set an entire wedding in for 200 so mm -hmm. you know it's it's I mean we say if you know if that seems too expensive um Maybe. Think about the time, and I also tell people, think about the time that you take to edit those images, because you think about, if I send in 2,000 images to photographers edit, and I, and I pay $250 and like $50 for that, if I subtract that from what I make, like, so that's obviously not profit at that point, but how many hours would that, did that just save me? Exactly. Right, well, right. Actually, when I ran the numbers, I was making more per hour sending them into photographers edit than I was making per hour doing it on my own. One of my best friends told me that, Kathleen, you make more money behind your camera than you do behind your computer. Yeah. And it's true. Right. It's, I can take on more photo shoots if I'm behind my camera versus behind my computer trying to do. And we're not talking about, we're not talking about the mark that makes the photo you. We're no. talking about the part of the editing that's going to be done across right. the board the same way every single time by someone who's yeah. trained to know how to do it the same way every single time. And, and you the color balance too, and honestly, expose and then like, you can again, do it how you want it you know, it's going to make us and our actions look better mm -hmm. if you're applying them to a photo that is, you know, technically as correct as it can be. Yep. And it's, it's, it's time that you guys are talking about this because this is a subject we've covered, what we've brought up just recently. Uh, Kathleen wrote an article about it and we've talked about it in, in the, our Facebook group and uh, on here before a little bit. So it's, it's, interesting to hear you know you guys use it and uh, more and more people I'm hearing more and more people use it that feel that they're not giving up the total edits you know you still have to do no. some of it yourself uh, because yeah, I think I, a lot of, I think a lot of people like I would be afraid that um, the photo is going to come back and they're not going to look anything like me I'm really out of the process now they just they, I mean they do clean edits it's a very basic they don't it's just uh, straightforward it is a very straightforward edit that you would do in ACR or Lightroom before you pull it into Photoshop right mm -hmm. so it's not like they're not applying a style they're not applying and, and when I do it I tell them 0% black and white because I have a black and white that I like right that I will use and so I, I just want them to come back as a clean color edit so you can do your black and white my style you know? okay I do have a question for you guys okay yes do you guys have a favorite set of actions that you guys sell? Like, what's the one that you feel like are your go-to actions? Mine is just a pinch. She, yeah, she loves just a pinch. That's my favorite set. I, um, I actually go between two of them. Um, I, I always start with my basic um, from set one. You know, I just I lay the groundwork with set one every single time. And I will always use Studio Pop. Um, from our purely studio. Like I just think that just gives it just that finish and I love it. And then a lot of times though, I will apply a haze and it just depends on the color, the tonality of the shoot. I'll apply a haze and turn it way down because it gives it that finished sort of smooth polished look. Mm -hmm. um, and then the haze though, that just comes from, it just depends on what the color of the shoot is. It depends on what they're wearing, what the color of the light is, the color of um, the background. That's uh, it's kind of up with that. But, yeah. Can you guys look at other photographers' work and kind of um, unpackage what you think they did to an image? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because I know that I can do that as far as, like, how did they take that image? Like, I could probably guess what lens they were using yeah. or guess oh, what, you know. Yeah, you're like, oh, that's an 85 book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but so, like, I they have a light. It's probably about here. So right. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, it takes a lot of time, but once you, once you, I mean, we pour over images, like you, you know, start looking at it and say, oh, they did this, they did that. Um, and, and actually, um, one of our upcoming uh, ventures that we're doing this summer, we're crazy excited. We're doing designer action, so we're going to work with photographers. I was just going to ask if you guys did that. Yes, we're actually doing that. Because um, we totally don't lift anybody's stuff, you know, like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> like that's mine. Um, no, I mean, you know, so what we've done up to this point would be what we kind of figure, hey, um, this would be my workflow. And then people have said, hey, can you do a hazy set or whatever? And we've basically looked at it as, hey, okay, if I was going to sit down and do my ideal haze, because like I said, we don't shoot hazy. Mm -hmm. um, but we came up with, you know what, if I was going to do it, this is exactly what I would do. We didn't sit down and try to, um, like, boost someone's style and be like, right. Fine. Right. Um, whereas now in this set, we're going to have these designer actions where we're teaming with the photographers. We're talking about what it is that they're trying to accomplish with each thing that they're doing. Um, 
they're talking so about. So you're helping well. them build a, a designer action for themselves, or are you going with popular photographers who have a look that you're going to package yeah. and sell? Uh, yes, exactly. second. The so second one. Okay, with, cool. Yes, so we've uh, teamed with uh, four or five photographers now who have a distinct, a very distinct look that people will say, oh my gosh, do you know how they do this? Um, so we've talked to them and said, hey, people are super interested. Um, so they're going to talk with us about kind of what they're doing and what their, um, what their impetus is as they're, like what's important to them um, as they're editing it and what, what their workflow is. And then we're going to put those together into some stable actions. We'll support them. We'll translate them to elements and do all of that. That's so um, cool. So yes, yeah. we're excited, really excited. Okay, um, so on the flip side, do you guys have a program where you help photographers like me who was struggling the other day to build my own action that's just my basic workflow and couldn't figure out how to like stack things? Do you guys have do you guys help photographers build their own actions? We have not really have done not. that to this point. Um and part of the thing is um it's it's kind of easier when you have the number of fans that we do, it's easier to do things en masse. Um, right. It's, it's a lot harder when it becomes a one by one type of situation, um, just because there's two of us. And so we get a lot of people saying, oh, hey, like, do you guys teach Photoshop classes? When we have a lull, we haven't had a lull for a while in our lives. Um, when we don't, when we do, we will set up, you know, um, classes and we do those sometimes. But, you know, when you kind of take it to a smaller level, um, it almost gets like overwhelming, like lots of people want to join in and you can't take everybody. Um, our time is just, you know, like we've become limited. So we, um, so honestly, like we really have tried to sort of make things as available You're appealing as to the masses versus one-on-one. -on -one. You know what you need yeah, to do. Yeah, show people like how to group actions. You know, you say, okay, like you can say, okay, I always run this and then this and then this. And so you say, okay, you know, just record that into one action, you know, Click this, click this, click this. So and it, what you need to do is we need to have a special JPEG the Raw podcast with you guys on where you do that to the masses. Exactly, yes. where we do it to the masses. I'm saying masses, <laughs> this is how we... We've only recently started um, teaching workshops. We, we actually have not taught our first one yet. Um, we have two in August in Florida and one in California in October. So, um, uh, we're going to try because <laughs> we keep getting emails for this. So I can see my hand shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're on the subject of of, act, of actions, we do have the giveaway we're doing. Yes. yes. And do you guys want to pick a number uh, between one and ninety-seven, and we'll do the live live drawing right now. Wow. Oh. You want to do that? Oh, the stress. Um, so well, you have no. So let me let me set this up for the people out in chat. You know, a number of people went on. They signed up. There are things that they can do to get multiple entries and that kind of stuff. I put them in random order. So let's say if you did two things, your two names may be spread out in a list. Nobody knows who is in what order other than me. Um, and we do have one lady who seems to win multiple times. I don't even think she did it this time. Because she's a little, she can, you can still enter Melissa San Sanchez. Uh, I think she's just worried that she's going to win too many times. She's won twice. <laughs> she's not in there. I don't, I don't see her. Um, so you guys don't know what number these are in. So you have no idea. So you pick a number between 1 and 97, and then I will put it in chat and let you announce who the winner is. Uh, in the Google chat hand. in the Google, which is on the left side of your yeah. screen. Choose 31. 31. That's how old I am. There you go. All right, I'm going to put the name. Do you see that name in the chat? Um, not in the online, not in the... Um, oh, yeah. So we're supposed to read. Okay, so you Linda, want to say the name? Go yes. Ahead, you, go okay, ahead. so Linda Mendez. Linda Mendez. I don't know if she's out there or not. Tell us what she's winning, guys. Okay, she gets an action set of her choice. So she can let it So she can Doesn't. come and like decide what her style is, and we will hook her up. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! Very cool. It, well, and one thing, except for the bundle. I mean, we want to keep this reasonable. Yeah, so like you know, anything. Yeah. That, no. <laughs> right, right. That's that's a little. That's what I would have been picking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure that's what everybody would have picked. But um, yeah, so no, uh, Linda Mendez. If you're out there, if not, we'll be posting it on our page. Scott, no, that is not a uh, Spanish for Scott Green. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
Scott is a um, Scott's been on the show several times, and he's a he's also a professional wedding photographer and seniors and that kind of stuff. And he's always helpful coming out here and chat with us too. We have a, he's, a all, he's also annoying, but he's very helpful. <laughs> he might be one of those trolls we were talking about. <laughs> yeah. He just tries to get to see how many times he can slip us up on the show, so that's right. why we say he, he's, he's here for the blonde. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I um, blonde too. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> so this is, a, you know, believe oh, it you not. guys were talking about Tim, weren't you? Dang it. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we, this is the time of the night when, because uh, we're at an hour in already. Um, this is the time we usually open it up to chat. And I know that chat's been asking some questions and, and I've, I've got a few, but not very many in as we talked. And you guys don't have to look at chat. We can still manage that, that for you. Awesome. But we want to... Um, Open it up the chat and say if there's anything that you want to ask, uh, Rachel the and Crystal. Awkward silence moment. Right? Well, there is there is the delay between when I say it and when it when it happens out there. But when, you know, before we have to let them go because we can't keep them here all night. Uh, any questions you want to ask them? Do you plan to adapt your actions for CS6? They actually all work in CS6. Um, we've been running them um, with the beta. Uh, already for over a month now. The one hang up it has, ooh, I can tell this to a bunch of people because I keep telling people one by one, this is fabulous. <laughs> um, the one hang up it has is CS6 has redesigned the crop tool, which is fabulous. I love the new crop tool. It is my, it just makes It has fun. that balancing effect oh, thing. It's super cool. It. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's fabulous. The, uh, the thing is, this will affect any action that you run. Um, if you crop, and you don't check the delete cropped pixels box. Um, when you crop, it will change your background layer to layer zero. So any action that references your background layer will have an issue. So basically either you can um, just, you can go through and uh, just rename your background layer back to background. Uh, after that happens, you can click delete, delete cropped pixels and that will leave it at uh, the background layer or you can wait to crop until you run any action that you uh, have you know used um, cool. any action you plan to use so those, that's the only real hang up there's no real fix since um, you know it, it kind of just depends on what it's going to do um, so that's just kind of how we recommend people manage their workflow in CS6 um, I'm sure there's some kind of like other you know, there's probably other ways you could manage it as well, but those are the easiest, most straightforward. And I do want to, since this is your first Google Hangout, I want to warn you that at about an hour in, yes. it is going to give a little pop-up thing that says, are you still here? Oh, I don't okay. know, Kathleen, Tim, if y'all haven't seen it yet. I got mine already. Yeah, mine just came. Okay. And what will happen is if you don't click on it, you'll be dropped out of the Hangout. It's just, out. it's a way so that you don't oh, stay no. in forever. Um, do, you, do you have any photographers you follow? Um, okay, we both like, okay, and especially Crystal, she big puppy hearts Jasmine Star. Yeah, okay. Jasmine Star. <laughs> I saw that, I saw there's a, you have, have a picture, of, yeah, and that goes, maybe that goes along with another question is, what, can, can you name the photographers you're working with on the actions? Um, we can name one of them, we can name one, because we're still working um, with the, the others. others, we want to make sure that we uh, can. We want to see how much of their sets we can translate into elements and stuff. So, um, so we're a little bit hush hush on the rest, but okay. um, the one we've already announced, and that's Caden Lane Photography. Caden Lane Photography. Okay. Robinson, she's fabulous. Her stuff is gorgeous. If you haven't checked her out, you must. Did you say Caden? Caden, C A Y D E N, and then L A N E. Caden Lane Photography. She is drool worthy. Well, if she's drool worthy, then maybe you should give her a shout out and tell her how amazing your time was on the JPEG to Raw show so we can yes. get her on here as a guest. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Should. Should. She's so fun. She's awesome. We got to shoot a Disney World wedding with her. Oh, how awesome. fun. Oh, no, that must have been fun. Yes. Yeah, it was amazing. She was fabulous. Yeah, so send, send uh, we'll contact her too, but um, yes. put in a good word for us. Oops. How long do you guys spend on a normal session? Let's not do weddings. Let's do like a family session. Family session? Okay, About you know what? An hour and a half to two hours. Yeah, I mean, are you talking shooting? Are you talking editing? Or editing, yeah. Just shooting, just shooting. shooting? 
About an like, hour and a half to two hour hours. Two hours. We'll usually start it like right now on age of the kids. Too. Yeah, and if and they're all grown ups, we'll just be like, and then we yeah. sit there for stunned silence after we've only taken like forty five minutes, and we're like, uh, I feel like I just ripped them off. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And then, but then you know, but then you have the family who has like you know the baby and the two year old and the four year old, and you're like, oh, and you have Pez dispensers and your hot shoe, and you're like, oh, smile treats, and you're jumping up and down, and you're pouring, you know, she's drawing drawing dandelions in my hair, and, and then you think, <laughs> we did not charge enough. No, no, but, but you know, I mean, no, it evens out. I would say probably About an hour and a half. I'd say an hour and a half. Um, our engagement shoots are usually about two hours. Um, we don't rush those. I mean, we start like right now. We we start we start at five forty five, and the sun will set at what like eight thirty. Yeah. Um, and engagement shoots, it's important for us to spend as much time with, with them as possible, only because we really want to. We want to get to know them. That's our last, probably our last encounter with them before their wedding day, and they're going to be. Super um, no, stressed I mean, we'll have like a. It, it's, I guess we'll, we'll do last bridals and, before bridals because yeah. we really want to be able to deliver something that's going to tell their story personal story so we tell will spend a lot of time with that yeah tell us it, about the photo shoot with that crashed plane yeah I, what i'm doing i'm showing a bunch of your photos <laughs> now in the stream it's not real it's the not. plane is what plane, what's nobody died. nobody died nobody died in the plane everyone's like oh my gosh that's so depressing i can't believe you took pictures where somebody died no that it's was in, in vegas it's and in it now. was um it was a it was uh. a shoot that we uh, paid to go on when we were at WPPI. Um, and we went with, because, yeah, uh, we went with uh, Bob, Bob and Don Davis. Davis. And you can actually see Crystal, like, just chatting them up in their little promo while we were there. So it was Very fabulous. Cool. So Crystal and Don love each other. They're so cute. She's so cute. <laughs> you should check her out. Yeah, you should check out Bob and Don. They're super cute, too. Yeah. Very so, cool. Yes. So we actually, yeah, that one is not a real crash plane. Um, it was a movie prop. People oh, were like, awesome. oh my gosh, I can't believe you would do that. <laughs> what a cool opportunity to be able to shoot in front of it. I love that. that yeah, it was awesome. fabulous. So, yeah, so that, I mean, that's a place that anybody can go shoot to. It's um, Nelson, Nelson, Nevada. Nevada. Very so. cool. So one of, the, one of the other questions um, is, you know, the business side. It's it's so intimidating when you're first getting started. And, and you know, Crystal, maybe you can uh, answer that because you, when you first got, didn't get, when you first got started, you didn't have insurance and you had that, that lawsuit. So what would you suggest to someone who's just getting started uh, on the pro side uh, that they need to do? They need to get insurance. They need to get insurance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no, I think and it's really I think to do it we went, right. I go through Hill and Usher. Um, that's who I have personally chosen to go through. You can also get double, I mean, well, and you can do TPA too. You, you can opt TPA. And when you're first starting, PPA offers, um, I think, like $15,000 worth of insurance, um, you know, for your gear and stuff like that. Um, Might as well just opt in. So just, you know, like that's a good place to start. But Hilton Usher is who I choose. And ultimately, no matter what, like I, I always say it will happen to you. Like I don't want anybody – I know some seasoned, you know, photographers that are finally going through it. And they've been photographers for – you know, 15, 20 and years amazing. and they're amazing, you know, so it, you're not immune to it when it happens, you know, nobody knows, but you know, if you're prepared, it probably won't happen. If you're not prepared, it will probably happen. Um, and just the peace of mind, because if you don't have an LLC and you don't have insurance, they will attach themselves to your house. They will attach themselves to any assets that you have. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and that's scary when you have a family, you know? And so ultimately I think that if you have, the funds, I mean, it works out to about, I mean, depending on how much you're insuring, it can be about $40 a month. I mean, and if, I think it's worth every penny. Yep. And then also, I would say, um, make sure you're paying your taxes. Absolutely. Uh, make sure that you have a business license and make sure you understand what your state, county, city, municipality, I mean, you know, because, you know, there's, there's, there's taxes for your county, there's taxes for... Uh, a lot of things. Make sure you understand everything you're getting into because, again, it's that same thing. You know, if if the if the government comes after you and says, "Hey, you haven't paid your taxes for five years," that's going to be ugly too. So, yeah. yep. um, so and they're not they're not very understanding. No. no, I mean, so you know, you want to do these things and you want to set it up and you want to do it the right way so that you're protected because you're doing it to earn yeah. money. So, not. What was the name of that insurance company? You said it kind of fast, and I didn't catch it. It's Hill. Hill, H-I-L-L, and then and, Usher. U-S-H-E-R. Like the singer. I heard <laughs> <laughs> So 
So do you guys have, you know, a, a common question is a, like a bucket list. Do you have a photography bucket list for you guys? Like maybe a top, top three or anything like that? Do we have a top three of things we want to do? I, well, I've always wanted to shoot a wedding in Puerto Rico. That's <laughs> <laughs> happening. So yeah, so we have a Puerto Rico wedding coming up. Awesome. Uh, you know, and I'll just say, I'll just say that the day that we got that email um, for the wedding in Puerto Rico was the night after the Bachelorette. No, the Bachelor went to Puerto Rico, and I thought somebody. And I, I was sitting on my couch, and I was like, Oh my gosh, like how awesome would that be to shoot a wedding in Puerto Rico? And then I got an email the next day. And I swear, I thought it was one of my friends, like, punking me. Like, I honestly, when I told Rachel, I was like, we just got punked. <laughs> because I was like, there's no way anybody in their right mind is going to fly me from Utah to Puerto Rico to shoot their wedding. And, yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so that was on my bucket list. Hawaii. I really want to shoot in Hawaii. So anybody out there getting married in Hawaii? Yeah. Or, like, I know she wants to meet Jasmine Star. Okay. So that, so you, you three, you three are Puerto Rico... Jasmine Star in Hawaii, and so you got one of the three. What about you, Rachel? Uh, me? Uh, I really, I, I want to shoot a 1DX. <laughs> like, so, I love oh. the technicals. I can't stand it. You uh, want to shoot a what? A 1DX. Like, I want to oh. that camera. Um, oh, wait, what is a 1DX? That is a new, new pro line. Oh, like, that's, the, that's like a the cannon. Super, like, you can yeah. run it over the tank. Yeah. Um, no, uh, gosh, you know, I, I, and you can ask Crystal, I'm one of those people who I'm really pragmatic. I take it as it comes kind of person. So, um, I'm the one that has all the dreams. So she has all the dreams and I'm just like, okay, how can we accomplish that? So, yeah. Um, so I don't know. I haven't really honestly thought a lot about it. I mean, um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. Gosh. Okay. Off to. We'll let you that. know. We'll okay. let you know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, she just wants to follow me. Right? I just want to follow Crystal around and do her awesome <laughs> stuff. So. Yeah, okay. just, yeah. What about this one? Uh, best advice for shooting families. I was shooting around 3.5 this weekend for the mini sessions, and some are still kind of blurry. So I guess oh. what, what we don't know there is whether it's, you know, you got to watch out for camera shake. In, mm -hmm. in person right. shutter so shutter we don't know their shutter speed because shutter speed could be the issue there but if right. it's it not camera shake or it could be that it's a low shutter speed and the kids are moving yeah so, uh, but if they're asking specifically about the aperture honestly yeah. um you know uh i mean if they try to get all of their heads in the same plane you know they're going to get them as close as they can and have them as much as you can you know you picture uh you picture depth of field as a piece of glass um and so, you know, there's a few things that are going to affect that. That's going to be aperture is the first one. Other things are going to be things like how, um, far, away how far away you are and what lens you're using. The closer you get to your subject, the thinner, the thinner that, that glass field gets. is going to be. So the more you can have them touching that. And that's a question glass. that we get all the time because we, because I will shoot at 1.2, 1.8, 1.4, 1.6, 1 whatever. And I absolutely and, won't shoot a family usually over uh, F4. Like, yeah, and people ask, like, how did you shoot that at 1.2? But they're completely in focus yeah. and it's a full body. And I, you know, I just, I explained that the farther away from them that I stand, the more, the, the larger that plane of focus gets. And so the more is in focus. Um, when you are up in their face and you're shooting at 1.2, you'll have one eye in meters. focus and yeah. one eye not in focus. Yeah. And so, then also, you know, so you're going to have that, that, um, you're going to have that separation from the, from the photographer, but you're also going to want to separate your, uh, your subject from the background. A lot of people want to be like, oh, this is such a pretty tree or whatever. I want them right up against it. And you say, no, 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 no. You want to have 10, 15 feet. 15 feet from that, and then you're going to get it in gorgeous bokeh, and they're going to look like they're 3D, and you can shoot at 3.5 if they're all together, and you're backed up a little bit. Um, I love to shoot families on 200 millimeters. Um, at 200, 200, 200 millimeters. millimeters. Like, with a 200 millimeter. <laughs> um, <laughs> So uh, I just, I love to have that look of, you know, people go, oh my gosh, I can't believe there's all this bokeh in the background. The family's, you know, absolutely sharp. And that's how we achieve that. And the biggest, yeah. like, tip, just a tip for, like, family shoots and kids is Pez dispensers. If you take a Pez dispenser and you break off the little just edges on the bottom, the edges. just a little tiny bit, it'll slide into your hot shoe on top of your camera. And so then when you're, ta when you're taking Mouse. pictures of your kid, of the kids, you're like, look at the pet, look at Mickey look Mouse. At Mickey. And then if they smile, they get a little picture treat or whatever. And you go up That's and they cool. can take a little treat from their That's pencil dispenser. Yeah. That is so stinking smart. Isn't it? 
didn't yeah. say that. So awesome. That's and awesome. You know, I mean, if you know it's going to be a difficult session, you say, what is your, oh, Buzz Lightyear? I'm going to go find me a Buzz Lightyear business dispenser. Yeah, so you would ha see what happens for everybody who hangs out a little that later with us? That is genius. Look at that. That is great. Yeah. That's an awesome. That is a good one. Awesome. Never would have thought of that. <laughs> so do you do? Like, oh, this looks like it's almost the same size. Hey, <laughs> look at that! <laughs> no. yeah, All right. So, what is your go-to <laughs> lens? Like, if you were stranded on an island and only had one lens to take with you, what would it be? I hate those because I love like a whole ton of them. Mine would be the one thirty-five two point oh. Um, okay, but see, I'm on the island and I'm gonna overthink it. Like, I'm probably gonna say I have to take my 50 because you know it kind of works in every situation. Mm -hmm. Low light because you know probably cool stuff will happen at night. 50, you know, I can kind of catch almost anything. But I'm 135. Really, I'm gonna be more up in your face. And it's all gonna be in focus, like so. You know, it's a pretty sharp lens. So, Crystal, you said 35, not 135. No, 135. 135. 135 2.0 is an amazing lens. And I will say it is, I think, the cheapest L lens that they sell. It's pretty close. It's pretty close to the cheapest L lens. And it is crazy sharp. Um, it, is, it is an amazing lens. It's, and it's not considered a macro? No, it's 100 millimeters of macro. Yeah. Right, but 135? 135 yeah. millimeter, yeah. And you got to stand pretty far away from them then to get those pictures too. You do, yeah. But you know, like for families, like I'll shoot the 135 or the 70 to 200 at 200 millimeters, and she'll do the same. But here's our reasoning why: is it gets in, it gets natural reactions. If we're on a 50 millimeter lens and we're like right there in your face, the kids like get anxious and they get, you know, like they just they get nervous because you're right there. But if we back up as far as we need to back up to get to to, to be able to shoot at 200 millimeters they get to interact with each other and we get to catch those interactions. And we're not in their face like saying, hey, smile, or hey, look at each other and laugh. Like, I mean, we're far enough away that if we say something to them, they're not feeling like we're invading their. Yeah, but how far are you away? 20, 15, 20 feet at least? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, about 15 feet or so, yeah. Uh, and I love that compression though. I mean, I've gotten to the point where Shooting, you know, something, if I'm on a 50, it just feels so different than shooting something at 200. That compression of the background is beautiful. Yeah. And, and the person who asked the question about shooting the family, I, I, she gave us a link to her photo. And I think the issue there was, it's not shutter speed. I think it was, she's probably using too low of an aperture. And, her, and she's shooting the family at an angle. So one kid, it's a, um. it's a, a kid sitting on a dad's lap, a son in between the mom and dad and the mom on the end. So it goes daughter, dad. Yeah kid uh son and then and then mom so if you look at that it you know i don't know maybe that's six feet five feet from the first yeah. person to the oh, last yeah. person yeah. and yeah. and yeah. shooting at an angle and shooting them at an angle so if you focus on the boy's eyes the girl's gonna be a little bit out of focus because she's the first one because they're at an angle to you, you. Always, no matter who no matter where no matter how you've got your family staggered you always focus on the very front row whoever's in the yeah. front that you always focus on them because if you focus on the person behind them like the plane of glass that the you know it's not going to start until behind them so they're automatically going to by default be out of focus unless you're shooting i mean you always focus on that first row i think and of it like, i think of it sort of like a fence if you're dead on looking at the fence straight, then the whole way, the whole way that that fence goes yeah, is absolutely. going to be in focus. Exactly. As you turn, now that fence is going away from you in both yeah. directions. But and then you're also you... going to talk about how thick that fence is. True, and right. It's going to affect that thickness of who is going to be touching, how you can be interacting with the fence. And that's yeah. going to be things like your aperture. It's going to be things like how far away the photographer is, et cetera, et cetera. So... Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, absolutely. If you're, line, if you're lining the people up in a straight line, then that's that fence and how you're getting at that angle. Yeah, but, if, but if you have people staggered, now you got to worry about how thick that fence is. Exactly. And whether you're going to get the people exactly. in the front and the back. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Exactly. So hopefully, Erica, we answered your question. If not, right on our wall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I said, okay, so we are we are we should probably wrap this up because I know I don't want you guys to go too long here. Um, so maybe one more question from chat and then we'll we'll end this. And I took hopefully this hour went by you know, more than an hour now went by really hour fast. And a half, yeah. yeah, went by really fast for you guys. I talk a lot. And we could have yeah, that was great. We could have you guys out here again sometime too. Oh sure, sure. So.
You know, Chris, I was just thinking about it. You talked about the 135. My favorite lens on my camera is the 85 1.4, and I have a crop factor of 1.5, and that, that translates into about a 128. Yeah. So it's really the same. That is my favorite lens. Yeah. I love the 85 1.2, but it's so slow to focus. It kind of just rolls into focus. When I'm shooting families, I won't use it because it's so slow. If I shoot wedding portraits or engagements where they're going to, I know they're going to stand still, I'll use it, but um, families and stuff, I won't use it. The 135 is super fast. It locks focus. I mean, you can count the eyelashes, you know. It is but you're a full frame, correct? Yes. Yeah. yes. So for me, that would be like a 200 millimeter lens. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. You're like, ooh. Yeah, yeah have... so we love, we love shooting a little bit longer lengths. Yep. Generally. Oh. Yes, we are still here. here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you just got it. Yes. Thank you for hitting that. Uh, and this is a, I guess this is a question that comes up every time. Anybody who's trying to become pro struggles with this question, and that's the, the price to charge for their work. And I'm sure when you guys were starting off, you had that same, you know, what do you charge? And I think yeah. people, str people struggle between I'm still learning, do I charge full price? But you, you can get yourself trapped into this low price that is hard to get out of. Exactly. It is. Because you become known as the bargain photographer. Yeah. And, you know, it's really hard, too, I'm going to say, when people come to you not because they love you or they love your look, but they come to you because they love your price. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get people who come to you with macaroni and cheese on your face because they just don't care. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know? Um, that is crazy. But I honestly, but I will say that no matter where you are, like when you start off, I honestly believe that everybody needs to shoot for free. I mean, you've got to. Like you've got to. Like shoot I'm your not friends, fine. shoot your family. I you mean, know? don't go out there and undercut, you know. No. Like the no. pros and say, I'm going to shoot your wedding, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean. <laughs> You know, go out and shoot. People, but you, know, you have and to shoot practice. A lot. You have to practice, and you have to, you know, gain your experience and gain knowledge. And um, to 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 charge pro prices, you need to consider yourself a pro. You need to uh, oh, hold on. I messed something up. Also, and that is a cute little boy. Um, but yeah, no, it's, um, I think it's important that you. Uh, you know that you need to put that time in, but then when you do charge, um, you know, I mean, I think one of the things is, is you need to consider how you're going to affect the industry, you know, and, and especially sure your local around. industry. Yeah, I, I mean, you need locally. to do your research and and find out what other what, I guess, what the norm is for your area, so you don't undercut your other photographers in the area because that's not it's it's not okay. Like it's not okay to um, to do that because it's just going to tear down that industry in your area. It's not going to build you guys and, up. And honestly, the people who come to you because you're the bargain basement, they're not the people that you want. And they're going to be... The not always. I mean, maybe they're going to be the nicest, but... The, but you got you got to be willing to... have always been our bargain client. Yeah. You've got to be wa willing to walk away from some clients that, you know, if they yes. want that bargain price. But the other thing is, you know, you, you, if you're doing this, if you want to become pro and do this to make money uh, more than just like hobby money, because at that point really is a hobby. If you're yes. wanting to become a pro... Um, you have to think about, can I live off these wages? Can I pay that yeah. insurance that Crystal told me to get? You know? Yeah, and you need to also be able to justify the time away from your family. I mean, you Absolutely. have to be able to say, is if I am stepping away from my family and my kids and my spouse, and I'm going to shoot this family here for $50, is it worth that, that hour and a half shoot plus however long it's going to take me to edit those pictures? So probably by the time I deliver a product, I'm five to six hours into it. Is that fifty dollars? Is that ten dollars an hour worth it to be away from my kids? Maybe and, there's a. Okay. And that's not even saying okay, wear and tear on my camera, gas, uh, insurance. insurance, taxes. So that's where we were saying, you know, when I was saying when we were talking about photographers at it, if you're saying, oh my gosh, two hundred dollars to take <laughs> like that's too much then you say you know what maybe you're not charging enough yeah. you know if that's oh my gosh that ate all my profit you're saying well really because you're going to spend you know 10 hours is 200 dollars profit is that a good idea yes. well and it's such a balancing act because i've also seen a few photographers who have started to charge more but their work hasn't excelled to that level yet mm -hmm. and yes. so then they find themselves sitting there with no work and they don't understand it and it's that whole thing that you want people coming to you because of your style and not your prices yep, um, and when your prices don't matter anymore then you know that they're there for the right reasons and but one of the things that we did too is we would you know we put out there our actual like this is the price that we hope to get to and then it was you know we're doing a special 
and you know it's this much off and then it's a little less it's a little less so people understood you know what uh, you're getting X amount of value and you're getting a deal on this um, because you know we always want people to feel like they're getting value and that we're not undercutting the market you know it's not oh my gosh you know because I don't want somebody to go to a pro who's been shooting you know for 20 years and I don't want to say hey you know what um, I don't want him to come up and say oh my gosh you know Joe who's you know my friend or you know now you know I don't want to say what you you said you were gonna charge me X amount for a wedding well if I go over to Rachel like she right. only charges me like this yeah. much money. I don't want that going around and I don't want that being held over other people's heads. So I wanted to say, oh, wow. Oh, Rachel, you're giving me this deal. But, oh, I understand, you know, the norm price is still right. in line. With but that's else. smart because now you're not the bargain basement photographer because you can always pull back to that normal price. Yeah, exactly. You, so just because you have a deal going on, you're, you're – it looks cheaper for now, but it, that could be gone easily. Yeah, you know, I think, I think the question for people would be, how do I know when I'm supposed to start raising my prices? When you get um, over busy. When you're yeah. overbooked, that's the one. That's the number one thing. When you have more work than you can handle, then your prices need to go up. And then number two, this has happened to me a number of times. I would have photographers who I really admire happen upon my site somehow, and then privately message me telling me you don't charge enough. Yeah, or you know what's even better when your client says, "Oh my gosh, I was shocked when I got your pricing." Yes, yes. <laughs> in a good way. Yeah. Happened too, exactly. Yeah. I mean, because you think about that when your when your client tells you, "Oh, I expected it to be more," and I was pleasantly surprised when it wasn't. Like, I mean, that's money that you could have had. That's Absolutely. right. Absolutely. That was, Knowing that, that they would have spent more. Exactly. Yeah. Like, now, Crystal, the number one thing is when you're value. more busy. When you're more busy than you want to be, it's time to raise your prices. If you're sitting around with no business and thinking the problem is your prices, it's only because they're too high. It's probably not because they're too low. Yeah. <laughs> I think that if you are, have low basement prices and you are busy, 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 then it's time to go ahead and make a job. Well, and, here's, and here's the thing. But you know what? what Sometimes people, people are afraid, too, though. Of low. They go, why are they why so Why are you low? so cheap? So you got to be careful, though. Yeah. There is... Because if you want to get into the higher-end market, like you have, to, you have to realize that the higher-end market, they, if you are cheap, they probably will not book you because there's a they're they're, they're scared of to why right, the perception is you're not good. Exactly, you're not yeah. you're not going to deliver. I mean, that's just, I hate to you say it. You don't understand it. business. Yeah, I hate to say it, but sometimes your price is associated with what people think your value is. Well, that you know depends I mean? on like, your marketing too. You know yeah, exactly. Yeah, but and here's the other thing: is if you're not shooting and you really want to shoot and you really want to start charging more, Rachel and I did this at the beginning: is we would offer free shoots, but we would say, you know, oh, we have an idea. Um, that we've been mulling around in our in our mind, like a theme shoot, or or we want to shoot at this specific location. So we're offering a free shoot to to the first client or customer who contacts us, um, you know, or however we want however we wanted to word it. So then we had work to show because it's hard to get work when you have no work to show. Yes. Um, and you, and especially with Facebook, you want to stay in people's news feeds. You want to stay relevant. You want to stay active. Um, and so you know we would run those like specials. Um, uh, and more so it was just for us to get work and it was just for us to have something to show. Mm -hmm. um, but in return, we actually got clients because once we started showing that people were like, Oh, they're busy, you know, they're, and we got our style out there. People were yeah. Like, oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, we just concoct some like themed shoot and it really wasn't even, it doesn't have to be some crazy theme. It's like we wanted to shoot downtown at this alley, you know, like, mm -hmm. or wherever. Um, and so we just would look for a couple or, and it gives you a lot of directorial power too. Yeah, because I mean, it's they're signing up for whatever vision you have, so you know you have a lot more power than say if they had hired you. Uh -huh. yeah. Then you go, what do you? Well, I know for do, me, do I'm guys... a newborn photographer, so I really wanted to start shooting twins, but mm -hmm. couldn't do it until I had twins on my website. Yep. Yeah. So I just did a casting call for twins. As soon as they were up there, I started booking twins all the time. Exactly. <laughs> now, do you guys put your prices on your website? Uh, we don't. We have a PDF that we send out whenever anybody emails us, but we're not shy about our prices. We will okay. share our prices. We don't, I mean, we feel confident in what we charge. Yeah. So, but we don't put it out on our prices. We have, I, I believe we have starting at, so it kind mm -hmm. of, it'll, uh, Gives you an out. idea. It, right. It'll, it'll pre-qualify our clients, like our wedding yeah. clients. Um, so if they're only expecting to pay $500 for a wedding and our, and our page says starting at 1500 or 2000 or whatever, then they know that they're, they're not going to be able to afford us. Um, and so they don't, we don't waste our time. They don't waste their time. You right. know, and 
and that's I think that. the subject of pricing could be its own show. We could do an hour and a half on nothing about pricing because be that is a question that comes up every single time we have professionals like you guys on here mm -hmm. is, is pricing questions. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we've, we've gone up enough for that now. I don't want to kill you guys. I want to make sure you want to come back sometime. Oh, I'm good. So, <laughs> yeah. so Rachel and Crystal, thank you for coming. And everybody out in chat who came to see them, thank you for coming. And hopefully you'll come for future shows. You know, yeah. we'll, we'll hopefully have Rachel and Crystal at some time in the future. But, but we, we have some great guests lined up coming up. And I went to put one of them out here, and I messed up because I put them too soon. And y'all probably heard some music. But we do, we try and get, hold on, I'm going to try and pull it up here. Uh, crap. Just a second, you can hear some music. Oh, she's dancing again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to do something different. <laughs> like it's somewhere hidden there on the side. There. Um, Rachel and Crystal, you guys need to make sure that you come back and join us in chat in some of the. It, we would love to have you guys out there because a lot of times, as you can see, there's a lot of questions that get piped out that we don't have time to answer, and we love having other pros in the chat room so that the ones that we don't actually talk about on the show, there's somebody out there who knows what they're talking about that can give people an answer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Awesome. That would be absolutely. Super it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. Um, like Scott, Scott does a great job of coming out for a lot of the shows and Scott's been on the show several times but next next week we have uh, Ben I uh, can't I never do good with last names but Ben Canales Canales yeah. Canales. Canales Canales I'm sure so you know we're trying to get some different subjects um, you know because there's a lot of different things you can do in, in photography, not just weddings or people or sports or whatever else. So we have Ben coming out next week who does some incredible sky shots. And he just did a video for the city of Portland. Wow. So be sure to come out next week and watch him. If anybody who's listening to this now, maybe, uh, you, you've got to see the show. But I will have the show up on iTunes or wherever else you want to get it. If I don't do it tonight, it's going to have to be this weekend because I'm actually traveling for the rest of the week. So hopefully get that up soon. And we are live every Tuesday uh, at the same time. So in, if you want, I'll put this out in chat. If you want to see who we have coming up in the future, we have a calendar on our, on our website where you can go and see who all is there. And yeah, we've got some really cool guests coming up. So check it out. Um, and don't forget to the best way to keep up with the show is to join our Facebook group or our Facebook page and subscribe to the show. It's really easy to subscribe to the show if you're on iTunes or Stitcher or even just coming to the site. I use I use Beyond Pod on my giant phone. <laughs> um, so thank you guys for coming out. If y'all will hold out for one more second as we go to end the show here. Well, Thanks, we'll Crystal and Rachel, and for all of you guys yeah. out there. Make sure you guys thank get you. your Photoshop actions and check yep. out their stuff. Thank, thank you, everybody. And everybody out in chat, hope to see you next week uh, when we're back with, with Ben. So good yeah. night, everybody. Good, good night, night, everyone.